Hello, this is Deanne from Small But Kind of Mighty. As I mentioned in my first crochet video, I've been teaching a lot of beginners recently, and this summer I taught my youngest student, who was only eight years old, and she was a bit of a natural. With this in mind, I've got two video series in production. The first is on easy projects for absolute beginners, and keep watching and I will share the second series with you at the end of this video. This video is a walkthrough of how to make this bunny. It's a great project for someone who wants to practice working rows of single crochet, but doesn't want to make a scarf or a blanket. It's a quick, fun project that can be completed relatively quickly, which makes it a perfect simple project for kids who are learning to crochet. They get the satisfaction of making something in a short period of time. Um, best of all, it's a really cute bunny. <laughs> so let's make a bunny together in seven easy steps. Step one. If you're a beginner and you haven't already, please do check out my crochet where to start video and the blog post linked to it. They take you through everything you need to know to start crocheting with respect to choosing the right yarn, the right crochet hook and the notions you'll need. Step 2. If you haven't got it already, go to my website and download the free pattern. I'll put a direct link to the pattern in the description box. It lists all the supplies you need together with written instructions on how to make your bunny. Step three, we're going to make our foundation chain by making a slip knot and chaining 21. For beginners, I recommend that you make your foundation chain with a larger hook than you use for the square. I go into this in more detail in the written pattern. And in my crochet where to start video, I take you very slowly through how to make a slip knot how to chain and how to work into the foundation chain. So if you haven't yet, you might want to take a look at that video and practice step three a few times before starting to make the square for your bunny. If you tend to chain tightly, which is very common for beginners, one tip is what I'm doing here, which is holding the chain stitches you've already made tightly in your left hand and then gently pulling up on the chain stitch as you make it to ensure that it's a looser stitch. So chain 21 and I will see you when you're ready for step 4. For step four, we're going to make a square. Start by switching to a smaller hook if you made your foundation chain with a larger one. Single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then into each of the next 19 chain stitches in your foundation chain. You'll note that I'm working in the back hump of each chain stitch which I really do recommend if you possibly can. And um, once you have finished uh, making a single crochet in each of your chain stitches, that will complete row one and will continue working in rows until you have a square.
you move on to row two, let's take a quick look at row one. Hopefully here you can see each of the single crochet stitches. There's the V at the top of the stitch, which constitutes the front loop and the back loop. And there's the main body of the stitch, which is called the post. If we count the stitches in row one, we should end up with 20. And at the beginning of row one, you'll see our turning chain, which is the chain one that we skipped at the beginning of row one. So let's talk about the turning chain. Once you reach the end of a row, you will chain one, and this is your turning chain. The turning chain is used to bring your yarn up to the height of your first crochet stitch in your next row. Once you've completed your turning chain, you'll then flip your work and you will insert your hook into the first single crochet and commence single crocheting across the row for row two. As a beginner, even if you're completing short rows, you may want to use a locking stitch marker to mark the first and last stitch in each row. This will ensure that you don't miss working into the last stitch and thereby start losing stitches. And it will also ensure that you don't work into the turning chain, creating additional stitches. Unless the pattern says otherwise, always insert your hook under both the front loop and the back loop of the head of your crochet stitch. And the head of the stitch is the V shape at right at the very top of the stitch. Once you've completed row two, I'd recommend that you count at the end of each row to ensure that you have 20 stitches in the row. And then you will chain one, flip your work, and start working on row three. Basically, you will repeat row two until you have a square. After completing about 22 rows, you should have a square. To check whether or not your piece of fabric is a square, fold it into a triangle and if both sides match up, you've got a square and you can fasten off. I'll show you here how to fasten off. I wouldn't have fastened off at this stage um, unless I wanted to show you how to do it because I actually went on and edged my square with a round of single crochet stitches. That's completely optional and uh, in no way um, a requirement in order to turn your square into a bunny. I just do it because I like the way that it um, makes the square look a little bit neater and it makes it a little bit easier to sew the back and the bottom of the bunny together. I will have a video on how to edge a crochet square if that's something that you want to do. Once it's published, I'll come back and link to it. What I'm doing here is marking the right side of the crochet square um, because I want to ensure that the outside of the bunny is the right side of the square. For step five, we are going to thread a length of yarn through the square in a triangle shape, then pull on the ends of the thread, and this will create the head and ears of our bunny. Before we do that, for the loose yarn ends that you've got at the beginning and the end of your square, you'll want to um, weave them to 
towards the middle of the square so that you'll be hiding them on the inside of your bunny. So this is my square, right side facing up. I'm going to turn it over, fold it in half, and then use another locking stitch marker to mark the middle edge of my square. Then on the wrong side of the fabric, I'm going to thread the length of yarn across the middle of the square. With the length of yarn successfully woven across the middle of the square, I'm going to remove the locking stitch marker and place it at the center of the top edge of the square and I'm going to find that center point by folding down one of the corners until it meets the middle. Now I'm going to weave the length of yarn up to the stitch marker and then back down to where I started to form a triangle shape. I can now remove the locking stitch marker and pull both ends of the thread of yarn that I've woven through the square tight. If you want to use safety eyes, you will need to insert them now. So put a little stuffing into the headspace to make sure the safety eyes are correctly placed. Then pull out the stuffing and put the backs of the safety eyes on. And if you're wondering what options you have for eyes other than safety eyes, I've actually got a video in production that I will link to when it's uh, published so that uh, you can see all of the different eye options you have for amigurumi. Once your safety eyes are in, lightly stuff the head of your bunny and then uh, tightly knot the ends of the threads together. Don't trim those ends yet because we're actually going to use those for step six, which is sewing together the back and the bottom of your bunny. Using the longer length of yarn, we're going to sew together the back of the bunny using a whip stitch and start stuffing the body. I've got separate videos planned for both uh, sewing together amigurumi pieces using the whip stitch and other stitches and also how to stuff amigurumi. But for now, the thing to notice is you want to pick up a thread from one side of the back and then pick up a thread from the other side of the back and sew those together, basically. Um, and when you get to the bottom, you will sew the uh, two sides together in the same way, adding more stuffing as necessary. For step seven, sew on a mouth using some black yarn and then make a pom-pom with either a fork or a mini pom-pom maker and attach your pom-pom to the back of the bunny for a tail. So this is the first in the series of videos on easy projects for beginners and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. The second video series, you may have guessed from watching this one, is going to be an Amigurumi 101 with a series of videos on specific issues like which eyes to use, how best to sew parts together and more. If you're looking forward to that, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks very much for watching, take care and bye for now.